Hello everyone, I'm Tresser44, also known as Fly, and welcome to this Let's Play of Pillars of Eternity. Last episode, we got a new companion on our side here. A man by the name of Adolf. Can I remove the hood for a moment? Yes. An elf and a wizard of sorts, so he's certainly going to be a nice bit of help. This will be good. Seems something's a little off about him though, but... No matter, we'll get used to things. Should probably put one of those in there, too, so that he has one. Anyway, we went into the inn, had a sleep, and had visions about the, uh... About one of the figures who was hanging from the tree, a dwarf woman, who looked at us and called us Watcher. Very strange. Aside from that, well, let's go and investigate and see if we can find out anything happening there. Then we'll take a look around the town. More villagers about. Ah, uh, it's glowing purple. The squat, distended body of an elderly dwarf woman dangles from a thin, crooked bow that sags at the tug of her noose. The bloated purple flesh of her neck, worn away in patches like moth eaten linen, bulges over the rope that suspends her, and her lifeless head lulls forward rigidly from one side to the other when the breeze shifts. You perceive a faint glow around her that casts no light on its surroundings, but there is a tepid warmth to it, and you feel somehow that you could reach out and touch it, not with your hands, but with some aspect of yourself that has no worldly dimension. Reach out for the woman. You take a deep breath, clearing your mind, focusing on your objective. As you exhale, you feel yourself spreading out toward the hanging woman, perceiving all that lies between you and her with new, unfamiliar awareness. Once you have expanded enough to reach her, there's a sudden jolt to your mind, a ringing electric surge of images and words and sounds. Involuntarily, you shut your eyes and feel yourself being pulled down to some deeper consciousness in a space occupied only by you and the hanging woman. And when you open them again, she is staring at you with eyes clouded in a milky fog, her body still swaying in a wind you no longer feel from a tree that stands planted in a misty void. The woman gives a slow nod of her head, the rope creaking as she does so, and she smiles at you. Have you come here for me, dear? Or have you gotten lost? Ah, uh, it is both, I think. Yes? Am I imagining this? No, I think not. A pity that. It would be simpler. A mercy, even. Do not have to wander anymore, no? Alas, we are here, you and I. Wherever here may be. Mm-hmm. How are you able to speak with me? Is that what we're doing? Perhaps it just seems that way. Perhaps it is the easiest way for your mind to make sense of it. I think it is a very good choice. I need to understand something that's happened to me. She nods, a look of pity on her face, as though consoling a child. The world looks a little different than it used to, is that it? Feels like you're noticing things for the first time that have always been there? She nods. You have seen past the shroud. It only takes an instant. Your soul remembers, yes? Remembers how it sees when it leaves the body, like being reminded of a dream you had forgotten. You are a watcher now, and a watcher you will stay. Uh, am I going to start running around with a sword of steel and a sword of silver and killing monsters and such, and also become unable to have children? Wait. Wait, no, that's one character different. What's a Watcher? What indeed? Long hours have many animancers spent studying such things. Not I, though. Not I. I'll tell you what I know, though, since fair is fair, and here we are, visiting you and I, and it reminds me of better times. Okay then, tell me. Souls pass on, 
Some say through Audra stones, which are the blood veins of the world. They leave the world for a time and are reborn into it, sometimes more than they were before, but usually less and seldom the same. For all souls there is a time where they do not live, yet have not passed on. And those souls roam the world, same as you or I, either leaving or lost. But no one sees them because they have forgotten how. A watcher sees, though, knows what to look for. And sometimes they know a person just by looking at them. Know where they've been in ages past when their bodies were other bodies. See memories even their owner can't recall. A wonder to behold when all goes well. A wonder! So... Basically, this world is operating on reincarnation, and the Watcher is able to see the past lives of people, and is also able to see the spirits that haven't passed on into their next life yet? I think I kind of get the idea. What do you mean when all goes well? Oh, nothing to be afraid of, I'm sure. It's just much to take in for some. Sometimes there's trouble sleeping or other difficulties. She smiles at you reassuringly, fanning out a tuft of long whiskers that sprouts from one of her cheeks. You should see old Meerwald. He could tell you much more than I. A watcher just like you helped many in his day. Took up in an old keep no one would claim. Not far, not far. Kadnua, beyond the Black Meadow. He will welcome the company. Well, that'll at least tell us something about what's going on, I suppose. I think I survived a Beowalk. Do you know why that would be? Did you now, dear? My, that would be something, wouldn't it? Could be luck, could certainly be. A storm can be a careless thing. Kaldara appraises you with scholarly interest for a moment before resuming her cheerful demeanor. Or maybe it got its hands around your soul but couldn't pick it up. A soul can be heavy if it stayed in one piece through its time. Strong souls, we call them in the trade. Cold, I mean. Call them. Those days are all behind me, no? I suppose they may be. You said souls break apart over time? Oh, yes. Entropy. Rimagan's work. We know little of why or how. We lose pieces of ourselves when we die and pick up pieces of others when we are born again. But less than what we lost. We try to stop it with the animantic sciences, but with little success. No. Okay. A very small few resist Rimergan's influence and stay together through some force of defiance, at least for a time. But they all succumb eventually, I think. Interesting and curious, and I apologize about the sounds in the background. I want to know something about you. Me? <laughs> I'll bore you to tears, though. Who are you? And here I thought you'd come to visit me in particular. Caldara de Baranzi, of the Valian Royal Academy of Animantic Sciences. Not the greatest of their number, but I came here all the same because this was where help was needed. What exactly happened to you? She laughs, a rasping, choked chuckle escaping between rows of buttery yellow teeth causing her body to bob up and down with each spasm. Seeing your blank expression, she catches herself. <laughs> oh, come now! Such a question! As though the answer were plain as a rope tied for strangling! Allow an old dwarf her last bit of cheer! <laughs> hmm. Well, I came where I was needed, didn't I? Offered my services to Lord Radric for a pittance, a humble pittance. I was to examine the Lord's wife, see why the gods have seen fit to poison her womb. 
Studied her for months, looked high and low for impurities, tested her valence, the permeability of her essence. Do you know what I found? Is it nothing? Nothing at all. A healthy woman, head to toe, blessed with a beautiful soul. Such a sweet woman, too. Meek, but warm-hearted. Mm -hmm. A few months' time, and the lord of the house demanded answers. For a time, I told him what he wanted to hear. Oh, yes, my lord. She is riddled with imbalances. I must have time to cure her. As the birth oh, dear. Near, he grew impatient, as lords do. And this is where I've ended up. <sighs> Lying to the one in charge to make him feel better without realizing that that's just going to cause more problems down the road. Then again, telling him the truth sooner would have probably resulted in your own death even sooner. <sighs> so what is an Animancer exactly? A student of the soul. Something so basic, yet so poorly understood. But so many breakthroughs have been made in my lifetime. Had been made. Had been. To hear the locals tell it, we're a gang of soul manglers that preys upon the weak-minded. And the worst of us are. But the best of us? The best? Inspirations, miracle workers. My parents were soul twins, miserable before they met, empty inside. It was an animancer who helped one find the other, turn their lives around. You wouldn't believe the stories. Amnesiacs helped to remember their lives. The suicidal brought back from the brink of oblivion. The elderly afforded extra moments to say their goodbyes. How soon we forget when we're afraid. Okay, then. It's a fascinating science. A fascinating time to be alive in a place like Deerwood that does not control the research, no? I love the Valian Republics for many things, but their recent caution will leave them behind, I fear. So, Animancers study the soul. Which is, uh, I'm guessing, supposed to be the essence of a person's being. I can understand why there would be caution and fear about that, since you are potentially messing about with someone's very being, and if something goes wrong, that's big. But at the same time, she does say there are plenty of good things that have come of it. It's... It's a tricky area, it sounds like. I have other questions. Of course. Actually, dear. I don't. Farewell. Goodbye, my dear. It was lovely visiting. Kaldara closes her eyes and her head slumps forward over the noose, and your surroundings seem to bleed into your vision from some unknown place of waiting. Laniara was granted Crucible of the Soul. Aloth looks at you through narrowed eyes. Are you all right? You seemed lost just now. Apparently, I'm a watcher. His arched eyebrows recede into his hood. Well, that is interesting. He gives you a sly grin. And I expect this has something to do with the hooded figures in the ruins, hmm? In any case, I appreciate your honesty. Since we're traveling together, it's probably wise for us to share these things. Do you know anything about Watchers? Only that they're rare, and that they seem to have unique insights into certain soul conditions, <coughs> as you just demonstrated. Let's continue on. So, Kaid Nua is where 17 we need and to go. A half. Oh. Pardon? The smell of pipe smoke, at once earthy and sweet, when it winds its way into your nostrils. Your eyes trace the smoke to its origin, where you find a broad man with straw-colored hair leaning against a mossy rock wall, his pipe held to his lips with one meaty hand. He looks you directly in the eye, but the look is not aggressive. He regards you with a peculiar smirk. Seventeen and a half. Well, it could be eighteen, depending on how you count the dwarf woman. I'm sorry? The dwarf woman. 
You were trying to figure out whether to count her as a full person. I think you oughta. I mean, yes, definitely. Why the hell would you not count her as a full person? Because she's short? Are you racist? Come on, man. What are you talking about? The people hanging from the tree. Eighteen of them. Well, last I counted, anyway. Is that what you people do for fun around here? Name's Adair. Though to the people around here, might as well be 19. Don't think I'd put you much higher than 22, 23 tops. You look like the sort that likes to get involved. One makes you think I was interested in the, in the dwarf woman. He looks at you a moment, his brow arched. His smirk broadens. I was smoking over here, saw you staring at her. Twice I refilled my pipe. You never so much as blinked. Your mouth was so slack I took you for a radrick at first. <laughs> Impossible. I don't drool half as much. <laughs> so you're already familiar. Still, you'll have to forgive my curiosity. Round here, we prefer to turn a blind eye to our dead. Do you know what a watcher is? Careful, friend. Let's not use that word round here. There'd be any number of Radrick bootlickers within earshot. Hmm. Ciphers, animancers, watchers. Same thing in the eyes of folks around here. Radrick especially. They come to these parts all the time with their cures, preying on the desperate. None of them are who they claim to be. Of course, seeing you with that funny look, I'd be halfway inclined to believe you were having some kind of communion with that dwarf. <laughs> Either case, maybe I'm not 19 after all. N no offense. None taken. Good. They don't mean it personal when they hang folks here. I have to remind myself. The town's had it in for me for a long time now. Only fellow who ever stuck up for me, well... He's number 18 up there. My headman on the farm. Used to be my captain during the war. The war? Saints War. Only one in my lifetime. Fella decides he's the living incarnation of Aeolthus. Overthrows Reed Ceres. Marches on Deerwood. So we gave him a Deerwood and hello. What's a Deerwood and hello? We blew him up. He smiles at this, but it is a smile of one recounting a joke for effect rather than enjoyment. Who is Aethus? God of rebirth and redemption? Formerly, anyhow. Maybe they call him something different where you're from. I had other questions. Why was your headman hanged? Got involved. Raedric sent men down here the other day. Said they had it on good authority someone in town was working with Kolsk, plotting Raedric's overthrow. Said if he didn't come forward right then and there, they'd hang every last one of us. No one was coming forward, so Swithin, that's my head man, he steps up and says it's him. They took him at his word. He sighs and shakes his head, his eyes fixed on the tree. <sighs> Bound to happen sooner or later. If not for plotting against Raedric, then for protecting me. What does your town have against you? Pick the wrong god. That's what it comes down to. There used to be a lot of Vathus worshippers in Gilded Vale. That mess of rocks over there, that was a temple to him, to give you some idea. Then one day, somebody named Widewind shows up on Deerwood's doorstep. Says he's the living flesh of Aethus. Got an army with him. Suddenly, Aethus isn't so popular in these parts. My brother Woden and me, neither of us believed it. No way was that Aethus. He enlisted, then I did too. But, uh, he didn't make it back. Ah, my condolences. After the war, people took to punishing Aethus worshippers, accusing them of treason. Got real ugly, especially after the legacy started. Folks needed someone to blame. I was safe because I fought, but then this rumor starts that my brother, that he was on the wrong side. And I wasn't so safe anymore, until my headman stepped in and said they'd have to hang him to get to me. Well, uh... Seems that's no longer a concern. Yeah. Of course, the townies don't do the hanging these days, but when Raedric's men come, they got no problem doing the pointing. Aloth glances at you and lowers his voice. You can see why I was eager to leave. Who's Kolsk? Someone who got tired of all the hangings. He's on the run now. 
probably will be until they catch him. If you're next to be hanged, why are you? what are you still doing here? Drinking, mostly. Point of fact, I'm on my way out. Just haven't figured where I'm going yet. Not a whole lot of places out there that don't think Wide One's legacy started with Wide One. Well, we could travel together. Where are you headed? Some place called Cade Nua. There's an old watcher there who might be able to help me. I seem to remember hearing something about that years ago. He tamed that place. People would seek him out for all kinds of things. Troubles of the soul, questions for the departed. Of course, that was back when you didn't have to say watcher with a hush on your breath. A man such as that, there'd be things I'd want to ask him. I don't know why I never thought of it before. Something kindles in Eater's eyes, and the vigor of purpose finds its way into his voice. Not sure how I feel about setting out with a stranger, and a strange one at that. But truth be told, you might be the only one in town who wouldn't feel some relief seeing me swing from that tree. Huh. There's a fine reason if I ever heard one. All right, then. Guess I'll do some sightseeing. Long as you're not the one picking the sights. He tilts his head forward and gives you a pointed look. All right, let's get going. All right, and we've got an eater here. Hey. Well, let's see. Well, we can talk with you. Sure, why not? Well, first, what have you got on you? So you use a saber, and you've also got a war bow. Pretty sure you're the same kind of guy as me. It's also got the Saints War armor. Okay. Interesting that we can actually do enchantments in order to improve things if we get the right gear. Or the right uh, equipment in order to do what needs to be done for it. I think it's all things and ingredients. It would just take time in order to get all the ingredients in order to do it. For the other people as well. Okay. How about... Let's see. Yeah, you're bait... Hold on. I got something, didn't I? Crucible of the Soul. The Watcher unravels the vital essence of his or her enemies, gaining endurance in the process. Interesting. So we damage someone and heal ourselves with this. Once per rest. Okay, that's a little bothersome. You've got Rapid Recovery. Fair enough. Defender. Can adopt a more conservative. Okay. Okay. All right, that seems to be the main difference between us. He's more a defender type, and I guess I might be a bit more of an offensive type. Well, we'll see. Let's talk with him, shall we? I hope that old watcher is still there. It's been years since I heard anything about him. What is it you want to ask this watcher in Cade Nua? Just some things about the past, about the war. I'd been thinking I missed my chance to find out what I wanted to know. That old watcher, though? He opens up some new possibilities. I want to ask something about you. If you're sure. What did you do before this? Oh, other than the war, I never strayed too far from where you found me. Farming, mostly. I was never much for cities. Never learned to trade. In my younger days, I thought I was going to go preach the word of Aethys. Just in our temple there. My parents encouraged it. I made so much trouble for them growing up. They used to say it'd be best if I got in good with the God of Redemption. Huh. <laughs> Amusing. Of course, us blowing him up probably didn't help my chances there. But if anybody'd forgive you for blowing him up, it'd be Aethys. Did the people of the Gilded Vale really try to kill you? They, uh... <laughs> they did. It was strange timing, because we just won the war. They celebrated when I came home. There was music and dancing. Trumbull used half his grain making this big honey cake. I still dream about that cake. Like having the best lover of your <laughs> life, but only for one night. Well, dang. And they were all sorry to hear about my brother. It took a while for word of the purges to reach us. Aethasians being murdered in the streets. Cold morn and the like. No way would they let something like that happen in Gilded Vale. That's what they all said. But the weeks went by and the purges spread. Hmm. Pretty soon they weren't so sure my brother fought for Deerwood. 
And they weren't so sure I did. Caught me by surprise after all the celebrating. <laughs> Should have seen it coming after the tailor said he was going to fit me for some new clothes, but then all he wanted was my neck measurement. Really? Nah, not that last part. But you had to think about it. Says a lot about the place I've been calling home all these years. Oof. Why'd you stay for so long in a town that hated you? Well, I'm sure my parents are still wondering the same thing. The Aeothasian purges were like this madness had come over the town. Like a disease. Seems like when you see something like that, your instinct is to wait for it to pass. Even when you know it probably won't. The family whose farm I worked on, they had a little hollowborn girl. And they heard the Animancers had this cure, the salvation it was called. They went running. This salvation, they were putting animal souls in children. Ooh. You might have heard about it. Giving them enough personality to care for themselves. You can guess how that turned out. Matter of time, the children broke down. Became wild things. Monsters. Anyway, these farmers put the family dog's soul in their little girl. For a while, the girl, she's making eye contact, she's feeding herself, albeit in a kind of messy way. And one day, she snaps. They found her gnawing on her brother's bones. Yikes. Had to chain her up, put her in a cow pen. Well, the mother, she wouldn't have anything to do with the girl after that. But the father, he'd visit every day, feed her chickens, toss water on her once in a while to get the dirt off. Most of the village, they'd whisper about him. Poor man, they'd say. Sick with grief. I can see why people would not approve of animancy. When the issue is people are born without souls, yeah, it makes sense that one of the experiments you'd try would be putting another soul into it. And animals are something to start with, but if that's the end result, I can see the fear and terror and hatred. He was just waiting for his daughter to look up one day and recognize her papa. He was waiting for her to get better. Didn't understand that at the time, of course, but these days I think about him a lot. Do you have any family? Just my parents now. They took a ship back to Adia when the purges started. Wanted me to go with them, but I didn't see things the way they did. Been a long time since I've seen them. I really should visit, but for some reason, I haven't felt much like leaving home. Good thing they chased me out, or I might have never left. Want to ask you something else? What's on your mind? I was wondering about Aethus. It makes two of us. What is there to know about Aethus? If you're looking to find religion, maybe you want to start with a god that hasn't been burned to dust, but I won't stop you. Aethus, he was a young man with a silver crown. Carried a candle around with him. <laughs> Sounds like I'm giving a bad eulogy here. He was... Well, he was a lot of different things to different people, I guess. Rebirth, redemption, light. Out in the country, he's gone, the farmer, who helps all things pass, seasons, and people both. He watches over the week, does gone. Sees imbalances made right. You could see why all the copperless rowdies around here might take a liking to someone like that. He was real popular around here for a time. These days, you won't find too many worshipping Aethys in the open. It's hard to know who still does it in private and who's given up. Feels like I'm the last one sometimes. If that's the case, he deserves all the mourning. Do you still worship Aethys? In my way. I don't suppose he expects me to show up at his temple these days. Not much left to do for him other than keep his memory alive and keep hoping that he's just been playing a joke on all of us these past... Fifteen years. Hmm. Far as I know, he hadn't said anything to anybody since the God Hammer detonated. Why worship him, then? Well, if it turns out he's not dead and I gave up on him, I'd have betrayed my God twice. Even the God of Redemption's gotta have standards. I'd probably be reborn as a fat Amawa's horse. It's not really it, though. Not all of it, anyway. Yes, it's more I still believe in the things he believed in. I just hope his death doesn't mean the death of those things as well. Sometimes it looks that way. Why did you choose to worship Aethys in the beginning? Raised that way. My family's been Aethasian going way back. I suppose it wasn't much of a choice at first. 
Don't know for sure why my family started worshipping him. Probably because of Gon looking after folks like us. He looks you in the eye, conspiratorial. Could just as well be that my ancestor did something so bad only Ephes could forgive. Explain a lot about where I got some of my less respectable traits. Did you only worship him because that's how you were raised? Mm-mm. There was something I genuinely liked about Aethys. Always. Like he understood people better than the other gods. Knew all our flaws and weaknesses and accepted us for that. Folks are at their worst when they're afraid. A god like Aethys, he made you realize there was nothing to fear. Made you a better person. Of course, he goes away for a few years and look what happens. What made you think Widewind didn't speak for Aethys? Was his actions. Not when he started his rebellion, and not even when he took over Raed Saris. It was when he sent his armies into Deerwood. Up to that point, he was sticking up for his people. That's what Aethys does, at least the Gaon part of him. Those farmers were starving, and their government didn't lift a finger. Figured if it wasn't Aethys himself, at least he had the right idea. But then he sent armies across the border. Even crossed it himself in the end. Word was he was chasing refugees that escaped the rebellion. Wanted to punish them, and punish us for allowing them to live here. That... That just didn't fit for me. Those are the deeds of a vengeful god. Skaen, or, or Wodica, maybe. Or just a man who'd lost his sense. I still have trouble believing it. But there's no one left to ask if it's true. Tell me about the purges. You sure you don't want to talk about something more pleasant? Like the War of Black Trees or the Legacy or something? Eater looks at you as though he's looking directly into the sun. It's eye-opening, seeing just how naked you are when you've got no god to protect you. The Saints' War was a hard time to be a dear wooden. People thought it was the end times. They talked big about how we were going to defeat a god, but... I don't think there was a man from here to the White March didn't think he was going to die. It does something to you, thinking you're going to die at someone else's hands. There's a rage that comes. Indignation. Imagine a whole country full of that. Might have been Cold Morn that started it. A town near the border. They let Widewind march right on through. Rest of Deerwood curse their names till the end of the war. Some say it was the Aethasians there that persuaded the town not to oppose the army. Others said it was just cowardice. It was like the legacy that way. No one knew the real reason, so they just picked whichever one best suited what they wanted to believe. Either way, that town was burning before the first ashes of Aethas hit the ground. It felt good to the people here to be in control after being so helpless. So the fire spread. A lot of us Aethasians went the way of our god. There were claims from the Church of Margarin that she'd actually commanded the purges. I found that hard to believe. It sounded to me like people doing what they wanted, wrapping their god around it like she was a cloak. Then again, that's what I thought about Widewin. What's on your mind? Let's keep moving. Okay. Eh? Interesting guy there, I think. So we've got a new guy on our side. That said... I have to end this episode here. Next episode will come the time when we start looking around the area here. We'll probably start heading up this way, see what Alfra's house is, and then start looking around elsewhere, moving around and seeing everywhere. There's a smithy in Gored's road south, road east. We'll take a look on each road and see if that opens up areas. There's Cade Nua, where we need to go, probably through Magrin's, Magrin's Fork in order to get there. Got a big city here to deal with, and other things here that we can't get to. Anyway, that'll be in the next episode. So, until then, I am Chester44, also known as Philae. That is Laniara, Eden, and uh, Aloth. Eden? Eder. Eder and Aloth. This has been a Let's Play of Pillars of Eternity, and I shall see you all next time.